Hello, and uh, welcome back uh, for another lecture. In this lecture, I want to talk about uh, plastic uh, uh, section uh, module ZX. So what is ZX? Before I get that, let me just, uh, you should really watch my previous videos, but let me just give you a little background. If we have a beam, could be the, this cross section, I cross section, doesn't matter, and a beam has a, with a bend, just like a truss, have a compression on top, tension on the bottom, and you have a neutral axis here. Uh, your uh, stress is going to be uh, is MC over I, when we know that, or same as uh, M divided by S, because I divided by C is uh, uh, elastic section module. So what is elastic, what is plastic? Watch previous video, but I give you about two minute version of it here. If we have a beam, and a beam has it like an exaggerated bend this way, and this is a neutral axis, we said the stress is equal mc over i. That means the maximum stress is at top right here, compression, bottom right here, in tension. When we do timber design, when we do concrete design, and even steel, uh, when it's, uh, uh, it doesn't have any lateral support, we always go to uh, find out what the maximum stress at the uh, top and bottom is. And this is how we found out. And normally, when we design something, we like to be in this zone, an elastic zone. We like to slide load causes a bending moment. And a bending moment causes bending stress. So this bending stress that is caused by applied load, you want it to be less than the yield stress. And the yield stress is the limit we set up in for elastic. We don't want to go over that. So what happens if you increase the load until you get to the maximum? So your applied load, which caused the bending stress, become equal to the yield stress. In wood, concrete, other material, we don't want to get here. We don't want to go over there. We want to be less than here for our design. This is an elastic design. But steel is a different property because it's ductile. As what I have on the screen, take a look at it. It can go beyond elastic. Go into, it can go into plastic. So when you go into a plastic, if you increase the load, and what happened, the uh, out outer layer still is stressed out, is yielded out, but the burden is taken further by the uh, other section, a little bit lower, and that's why you see the cross section. So it, it continues like that, and that become basically elastic and plastic. And if this continue until the entire cross section beam gets stressed out, so stressed down here is the same as the stress in the neutral axis and the same as the stress here, we call it full plastic. And of course, that's when you have a, 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 a plastic hinge. So that is a steel. So there in this area, we call calculate section uh, plastic module. In here, we take section uh, elastic module. S. And the ratio of these two together, the Z over S, then they call it a, a shape factor, which we will go ahead and discuss this in a problem. So let's go ahead and work on this problem to explain this a little bit better. I have this steel cross section. The FY for this is 50 KSI. And then we talked about FY. And we'd like to know what is the uh, MY, the bending moment that it's going to be up here for this section. And also, we want to know what's the uh, plastic moment, which is over here. So we want to find out what MP is, and we want to find out what MY is. And then, of course, that divided by this, that will give us a shape factor also. And in the process, we have to calculate uh, Z. Uh, let's uh, get to work anyway. So one of the first things we're going to do when we have this shape, I'm going to find out where is my uh, this, uh, the Y bar. My, so we're going to go ahead and find Y bar. And if you remember from a kindergarten, we learned Y bar is equal, um, let me bring this over here, summation AY time summation of area. All right, so now we're going to have a summation of A time Y. Our, uh, we're going to have uh, two area, one here and one here. And the first area, if we just use this as a reference right here, back down this way. And that's our reference point. 
and the area number one is going to be eight inch times one and a half. That makes it twelve. So it's going to be eight times one point five, and then multiply that by y bar. This is a one and a half. So this the y bar is the center of this shape to the reference point, which is a one and a half divided by two, become 0 0.75. 0 0.75, and then plus. Then this one, the area of the number two is uh, two inch times six, so two times six, and multiply by uh, uh, the uh, center of here to the distance right there. So if it, this is a six inch, the center of it would be three inch, three inch from here. And then another one and a half would be four and a half, times 4.5, and divided by the summation area, which is this comes out to 12, that comes out to 12, uh, which is basically 8 times 1.5, that's 12, plus 2 times 6, that's 12. And therefore, my y bar comes out to 2.625. That's a 2.625 from top. So my y bar is right here. It kind of comes out to here someplace. And that distance right here. Let's fix that. That comes out to 2.625. OK. So now we found that. The next thing we want to find out, I'd like to find the moment inertia of this shape. Again, that we learned that in second year. Remember, I is equal. I'm going to use a different color here. Hold on. I is equal 112 bh cubed plus ad squared. And bh cubed, 112 bh cubed is for rectangular shape. So let's go ahead. And in this case, we're going to have uh, 112. And b, let's going to start out with uh, uh, this shape here. So b is going to be 8. 112 times 8. And h is going to be 1 and a half by power 3 plus AD squared. Now, AD squared is the distance from the center of your shape to right here. So it's the distance from this center to right here. And that's going to become basically uh, A is plus first A. A is 12. We know that. And let me erase. I can go by it. So 12 times uh, this distance is 2.625 minus that center. So it's going to be 2.625 minus 0 0.75. And, uh, and uh, the next one is going to be this shape here. So I'm going to come back in here. Yeah, I could go right here. Plus 112. B, it's going to be 2 inches. H is going to be 6. By power 3 plus a, it's going to be 12. d squared, it's going to be the distance from the center here to there. So the distance from uh, some center to top is 4 and a half. 4 and a half minus that, and we'll bring it back there. So it's going to be 4.5 times 4.5 minus 2.625. Uh, equal. So I comes out to uh, 122.6. 122.6 inch by power 4. OK. We talked about it uh, that. Um, S, we mentioned it, is same as uh, I divided by C. And we said C is the distance from a neutral axis from the center all the way to the furthest point. The furthest point here is from here to there is 2.65, but from here to here is larger. So this, the maximum stress occurred at this point because the C is largest. So C is going to come out to a uh, uh, 6 inch. Actually, be six, seven and a half minus this distance. 
So be uh, um, I, let me write this out, 122.6 time, and that's a 6, 7.5, be 6 plus 1.5 minus, but coming back down, 2.625. And that's equal, this marker is not doing that good. Let me see, we got something else. Um, that comes out to 25.1. Uh, 25.1, uh, that's an inch cube. Okay, so now we got that done. Uh, the next thing we're gonna go ahead and uh, uh, calculate is the uh, MY. MY comes out to right here, our MY is equal uh, FOI time S. So FOI time S, FOI came out to 50 KSI and S came out to 25.1 and that is equal uh, 104, 100, no, 1255 inch cube, 1255 inch cube, one to inch cube, or we can make that to a, a foot cube, which is 104.6, divide that by 12, become 104.6 foot cube. This number divided by 12 become that. So that's MY. Let's find out what is Z. I still have room here. I want to find what, how can I find Zx? Now take a look what I have on the board. To find the Z, it's really not that hard because this cross section is all entirely steel, okay? Because it's entirely steel, so the uh, uh, Z is equal to what I have on that formula up there. And first we've got to find the P plastic neutral axis. Plastic neutral axis, and then because the whole thing is uh, the whole thing is is the uh, uh, steel. Then we can go ahead uh, calculate the plastic neutral axis by both area divided by two, and we know this area comes out to twelve. This area comes out to twelve. So the middle is going to be right there. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, see if I can uh, use a different color here. This is right here, right here. That's my P plastic neutral axis. And uh, that, knowing that, you can calculate Zx. So Zx comes out to the area of individual time the distance of the center of the shape to the plastic neutral axis. So the center here is 0.75, okay? Plus, the shape of this one is 12, this shape. We, we like the shape below the neutral axis and above the neutral axis. We're not talking about, a I'm, I'm sorry, not neutral axis, plastic neutral axis. So the shape below the plastic neutral axis, above the plastic neutral axis, and that's how we're going to use it. So it's equal area times the distance of the center of the shape to the plastic neutral axis plus this area, which is below the neutral axis, is equal 12 times from the center of this to the plastic neutral axis is 3, time 3. And that comes out to a uh, uh, 45 inch cube. So from here, we're going to go ahead and uh, calculate the uh, uh, our MN or plastic moment is equal FY times Z, which is equal 50 times 45, and that comes out to uh, Twenty-two fifty inch cube, or divide by twelve, comes out to one hundred eighty-seven point five 
foot kip. So if we want to find out the shape factor, is equal MP divided by uh, MY or Z divided by S, which they both come out the same. In this way, I'm going to say 45 divided by 25.1, uh, which is equal uh, 1.79. So the question was, what is the uh, WN? What is the load I can put on here that brings it to the plastic limit? WN is for uniformly distributed load. From here, I want to know what WN is. And I'm going to say, OK, MN, we know for uniform distributed load is a WL squared divided by 8. You can figure this out from the uh, uh, beam formula in the back of the uh, any uh, steel book. So now we have that. and. We know our M and we don't know our W, we know L square, we know 8, and therefore it's from there really, it's nothing to it. So WN uh, becomes uh, 8 times, this came out to 187.5, and divide that by L square, which was 12 square, and that comes out to uh, 104 point kip per foot. No, actually I got it wrong. That comes out to 10.4 kip per foot. So this is how it's done. I hope you liked it. Um, if you like it, please give me a thumbs up.